Who's first? Okay. Uh, so the, the way I approach the, the, the again, and thank you for the compliments for sure. I'm, I'm very very curious about the you know the response on the short. But uh, the way I approached this story was um, not so much from a cultural point of view, but more almost like you know a personal. I felt like okay, you know, I grew up in Spain, so just by you know thinking of of stories and, and trying to make that uh, you know something that can be universal or can be understood all around the world and be part of Star Wars, but in that will be, you know, culture will probably come out. Uh, what, is, what is great is, again, the team that I had was, you know, uh, is, is um, the leadership is, is from Spain, right? So, you know, when we were getting these kind of references, they will pick it up very fast. I'm, uh, I'm very fascinated. Our studio, we just opened a couple of years ago for the short. And we actually are very close to, um, you know, the center of Madrid, where you can actually walk almost like do a five-minute walk and go from the Prado to the Reina Sofia, and you kind of see the history of art in front of your eyes in a walk in a, in a, in a, in a couple of hours. Right, you go from a very figurative, you know, art form like Velázquez and Goya to a very, you know, liberating Picasso and and. And just seeing that, almost like, you know, I was thinking, you know, okay, I get a chance to do this. I have a blank canvas. That is kind of what Lucasfilm offered uh, in, a, you know, an amazing way, right? So I was like, okay, I'd love to connect part of that force through art to uh, that kind of inspiration that happened, especially, you know, in the 20th century and how, you know, we're very close, almost inspiration to... Demoiselle de Avignon, the, the, the famous uh, Picasso painting, and how was one of the pioneers of abstract painting. So really, you know, um, being able to graphically, pictorically push visuals and animation was, again, uh, and at the same time, be respectful of the mythology of Star Wars, but be bold, right? There was a lot of, like, connection there. Uh, so that's really one of the sources of inspiration. And of course, in the way you're like, when you're thinking of, a, of a, an, hang, uh, an anger where like she, Lola lives, while you're looking at the rooftops of you know, some of the cities in, in, in the center of Spain, when you're looking at the hilt, you go through the history of you know, Spain and swordsmanship. So those are things that kind of like started to uh, come naturally into, into the narrative. Sky Talkers is your, is your turn right now. Thank you. Hi, I'm Charlotte from Sky Talkers. It's so great to talk with you today. I really enjoyed the short. Thank you. Um, the drawing at E2 is such a great addition to the Star Wars droid family. How did this design come about? Uh, so, you know, I, I come from, my background is a character animator. So one of the first thing I wanted to really design when I got the call to make this short was okay, you, you know, you have that kind of bucket list of things you want to design. The droid came with this idea that usually, you know, I, 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 I kind of remember moments, right? And I always remember uh, R2-D2, and when he was excited, he will do this kind of move where he just kind of almost jump, right? And it's so specific to make, you know, him emotional and actually transmit an emotion through that movement. So part of you know, creating the design was like, okay, let's try to you know, avoid rolling. So let's get him like this kind of spider-like little leg so we can actually create um, you know, very you know, simple head tilts. I think the audience, part of the, you know, and this is the idea from the whole short is like, 
I wanted the audience to fill the gaps, like, you know, to connect the dots themselves and not give them all the answers, just have them in a journey of discovery. Uh, and the droid is that is, is we looked a lot at, at little dogs, almost like, a, you know, at puppies and, and try to figure out, you know, uh, these almost like or also border collies. I always talk to the animators about let's look at border collies and, and dogs that actually have this kind of shepherd uh, feel because the droid is there to kind of, you know, almost like protect, you know, it feels like very specific about protecting Lola and like, you know, being aware of like, watch out. Let's don't, you know, so those creating that relationship through design, but also through movement was super important, right? Talking Bay 94 is your turn right now. Hi, Brandon from Talking Bay 94. Yeah. You mentioned filling in the gaps. <clears throat> and I think with these archetypal characters, it's very interesting to see them being placed in their story. Did you and your team discuss their backstories internally while you were building <clears throat> these characters? And how did that inform who they were on the screen? Uh, that, that has been something that I've been thinking the last couple of years, even when I was writing the script, was this is almost like, a, and you, you've seen the short, like it's a moment in time, it's a culmination of a journey to two characters, right? Um, it's a face-off, right? So for me, you know, I, every, every line of dialogue, I wanted to imbue it with backstory, right? It's almost like everything there has to connect to a moment that these characters have lived through because, again, there is a dramatic learning experience in, in, in the way that I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the Sith order, right, and how rigorous that education needs to be. You know, it actually mimics, and that's, I think, part of the, the appeal of the Star Wars mythology, that it mimics some of the, you know, learning of history. And I think it was the way that it was connected and, and how we connect to it because we see some similarities to, to, you know, kind of history, right? So part of that, you know, you know was always thinking like, that must, must have been a dramatic escape or a dramatic breakup. Uh, so again, I, I started, you know, you ramble and you start, you know, taking uh, and, and thinking of unraveling and unwrapping the story and that kind of like, um, many of those choices and dialogue and moments come from that, uh, from probably, other encounters and even from growing up uh, learning about the Sith and having to choose a different path, right? Nice turn of the resistance broadcast. Hi, Lacey from the resistance broadcast. It's an honor to speak to you. This was one of my favorite ones. Oh, thank you. Really cool. Um, so there's so many shots throughout the story that kind of just stick with you even after the episode's over. For me, it's the shot of the Sith Master dragging the lightsaber down the hallway. It's just so beautiful. Are there any moments or shots that are your favorite? I have a, a very specific moment, and I, you know, was, I, you know, in, in animation, especially in CG, you know, there's a, there's a great team behind it, and many hands touch a shot, right? So that's one. You know, there's one that actually I was there trying to connect the camera. Is the shot where is a, a shot of realization of Lola, right? From uh, when she realized that, you know, darkness is part of the picture. This camera that is on her looks down, the camera, you know, kind of tilts down, and then we see kind of the force, kind of the dark force in a way, and her controlling it through the arm, and then, you know, seeing the, the darkness expanding on the floor, and then lifting those dark bubbles of you know, of painting that we've seen before that she cannot control so much into like now fully realized. So we, we did a lot of back and forth. We, you know, we changed the lighting from the beginning of her to afterwards to see that kind of resolution, enlightenment uh, coming up. So moments like that are great. And I have, as, you know, I have one more that is when the little droid discovers the little flower that is growing um, you know, it's one of these where like very, very specific, very uh, a special moment when she, you know, we, we kind of use the, 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 the droid to actually change, um, again, just witness, uh, you know, this kind of creation on, on painting, right? Yeah, there's so many. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's the radio, is not your turn. Hi, Rodrigo. I'm Nikki from uh, Octoradio. 
Uh, first of all, I just want to echo everyone else and say, you know, the short is amazing. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, speaks so beautifully to a lot of the great Star Wars themes. Um, but I wanted to ask you, um, because I'm curious about this in your previous work, um, Troll Hunters originally began development, I think, as a feature film, and then eventually lived uh, with, with great acclaim on uh, Netflix as an animated series, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure opened up all sorts of new storytelling avenues and different opportunities that you maybe you know you wouldn't, weren't expecting at the beginning. Sure. Um, but I was wondering if you feel like Visions as a sort of project benefits artistically by being a series of shorts on a streaming platform, or do you feel like any of these, you know, any episode from you know, volume one, volume two, could be just as effective as a feature film? And then I guess by extension, like, what do you feel like is possible for Star Wars in an animated realm? Um, that's a great question. I think, um, again, I, I really love how Star Wars Vision came together, right? And uh, what the Lucasfilm team is, is kind of doing with it, right? Is, is actually, you know, making it um, a safe space in a way that let, you know, creators bring a dis different point of view, a prism uh, almost like of what that Star Wars mythology that has been a long time with us, right? And how you can use that to bring different stories. I think that's, um, I think it's part of the richness of the mythology and what it actually lets um, the creators do in a way, right? Uh, um, and, and write um, is part of what I think is, uh, is, is again, it's very specific to that, right? Um, I do again. I, I think, you know, there, you know, because I th and, and I can tell you about my journey, not about some other. And I'm very excited about the other creators and what are they creating with with uh, with different mediums too. Like, you know, how also visions is not narratively giving something new uh, and and actually letting creating that sandbox to play, but also actually experiment visually in animation, right? So I think that is not something that is, it's hard to see, right, in studios that, you know, I have to really, you know, kind of place a bet on an animation show. Um, this is, that's what is great is like, you know, you're getting this, you know, excitement of, okay, let's use actually this, you know, anthology just to push different boundaries, right? For me it was, okay, let's, yeah, I, in the way that I was thinking of Sif, you know, it can be it live in a, in a Star Wars world. Like I, I was thinking more pre prequels in a way, like far away, that kind of medieval time that they talk about. But but I always thought like you know, there's you know if you know that those kind of moments could you know could be part of the source of this right, of this show, of these characters. But I want to think that way, right? I think uh, you know that's the way that probably someone else did more of a contained story. But again, that's what mythology, you know, well thought out and visually simple mythology does. It actually, it lays the groundwork for you to create structure like, you know, the classic mythologies that we still create stories from, right? And, uh, in, 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 you know, in our world, right? Now it's turn to fun for drugs. Hi, um, if it wasn't so visually striking, I probably wouldn't ask this question, but did the visuals inspire the story or did the story inspire the visuals? Because the visuals and the way they're used just seem so important in, in the broader story of the, of the short. Um, sure, I think for me it was, um, it was a whole, right? I wanted to create a piece that, you know, you had that reaction. It's like, where, where does this come from? Mostly because I do like when all, you know, and again, I, I love that kind of one that happened in cinema, is when everything clicks. Uh, because, you know, um, again, short film, film, TV, it's a very, it's a medium that actually is an, almost like a unity of different approaches, different mediums, right? So I really like when everything is used and every frame is supercharged with all of those things, right? Um, the, the, the inspiration for the short kind of came from a couple of places. One, a little longer 
uh, and have a little bit more of, of a longer gestation that was my, you know, myself wanting to play with a blank canvas and trying to bring color and bring these kind of, you know, um, um, these connecting the dots through painting and finding, you know, strong color palettes that actually uh, visually you can stop the frame and actually it feels like an illustration, but in motion it feels like animation. One of these things where you cannot quite uh, grasp, you know, how it was done. Um, and then narratively, the character of Lola came from, you know, I've told that story before, but, uh, you know, the idea of uh, um, una mirada is called in Spanish. That is, it's a hard one to translate. It's like, you know, a look or a gaze or it's something that, um, you know, my daughter, you know, it was a little small moment that could have been, you know, imperceptible, but during the pandemic, she wanted to get out of the house with flip-flops one of the first time we're leaving and i'm kind of the typical dad is like no 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 we're gonna get shoes and all these type of things that you've thought in your mind and then my daughter looked at me with different eyes that i've seen her before you know she was 10 and i realized that moment like you know there was a, there, there was wisdom on that look there was there was a you know almost like defy there was a you know there was so many things in that look that is like you know it kind of switched my point of view of like how I saw her at that moment and I realized wow okay I'm you know this is actually a different thing of what I've been experiencing before about you know shepherding you know your daughter or whatever how you want to educate right so that actually was again a very strong visceral moment that I wanted to you know make you know Lola part of it in the short it has happened before the short but it is, um, but it's still that kind of, um, you know, wanting to defy that, you know, and create her own path and, you know, journey uh, is, is part of that story too, right? Full of Sith is now your turn. Hey, this is uh, Brian Young with Full of Sith. I wanted to ask about of the, 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 the theme of the, the, the story makes a very strong statement, especially in a world where it seems like art is sort of valued less and less, you came out swinging with a really strong statement about how art is a path to finding the light in someone. And I'm wondering if you could just speak to that and where that, that came from and why you felt Star Wars was the place to do that, because I haven't seen something like this before. Uh, that probably comes from, my, you know, again, I've, I've been in the industry for a while and I've been in development for a long time. So, uh, you know, you, you get trained to get rejected, right? Uh, that's actually what, you know, you're, you know, if you want to make these kind of projects, you have to train yourself to be in that place. Um, and you get a lot of comments. And there was one exec that told me uh, very dismissively, it was like, oh, you want to do art in a long time ago, right? And that kind of always stayed with me. And I, I realized, well, this maybe is a great opportunity you know, because, they, you know, they give you a blank canvas and maybe that's actually where you can actually connect both, but um, you know, it's interesting, right? These days, um, it's a, you know, we live in, in, in definitely challenging times because it's hard to value or to put a value on something, right? It's hard to understand what is the value of something, right? Um, and I still believe like, you know, if it really hits your core emotionally, if there's a beauty to it, if there's, you know, a, a craft that, you know, a team has put into it, um, I really value those things, right? And I still think, think that is like, you know, one of the highest values we can, you know, bring to a medium like animation. So that's always been very simple in my approach. And I kind of like, this was the per perfect opportunity to use, okay, uh, you know, Star Wars visions and actually bring, again, a different point of view, but always aiming to, to create, you know, visual value, visual protein right into, into it. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have time for two more questions. So. Ooh, nice. Uh, in the same order. Oh, perfect. So, <laughs> I go again. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so, a question that I really had that was really interesting for me was looking not just at your short, but like all of the shorts of visions is the treatment of the Sith. Uh, traditionally, in Star Wars, like the Sith are viewed as a binary of evil uh, versus Jedi, which are good. But uh, visions, especially if Very emblematic of that, especially with how the use of color and art to show like all this journey. 
Mm. So can you expand on that a little bit, like what your views of uh, the Sith and the dark side is in reference to the character's journey in this episode? Yeah, I think, you know, again, that's where the, the, the best, you know, villains or dark side, not to just uh, simplify it, but those, the best uh, characters that come out of that kind of dark side is when they have these kind of uh, dichotomies, right? These kind of, uh, you know, almost like a, there's ideas that you can connect to, but at the same time, you know that they are, you know, they're not, you know, done from the right place, right? Um, for me, I call it like, you know, more than shade of gray. In our short, we wanted to do shade of color, right? Um, you know, I don't think it's, it's a, you know, it's a duality. That there's, a, there's, you know, one of the th things that I like concept-wise in terms of, you know, my life, and, um, and, I, and I tried to add it to the short, was this idea that you can live many lives in one life, right? And you can make choices that, you know, confront you and not easy, but actually they will put you in a place where like you'll discover other things and meet other cool people, right? And I think part of uh, this is what Lola does in the short, right? Is, is actually she wanted to find, you know, a different, well, she made a choice, right? A choice that has big consequences, right? Whatever you are, that, you know, that is a statement and is, you know, a, state, a statement on her side of disobedience, right? and trying to, you know, move away from that Sith order, right? So I think, um, again, the audiences are, are becoming way more aware of these things. They actually are looking to understand that because I do think we're going into a world where we're going to need to have these tools to understand what's coming because it's like, you know, it's very, you know, these kind of, you know, choices or what is good evil are very blurred these days and actually we need to get into nuanced storytelling to understand again what is what is valuable what is like you know what is you know what is that journey uh, that you have to and the choices you have to make now the last question by sky, sky talkers okay. hi thanks so much um i have a question about why, um, how, how do you think Lola's story continues after the short and if you have an inkling about where it, where it heads? Ooh, that's, that's hard because I only think of backstory. So I, I, you know, but again, as a statement, and this is probably a spoiler, right, after, uh, but, uh, but it's this idea that, again, she was able to change a small, the small, home where she lived, right? Uh, and make it uh, look or make it, you know, a place that is kind of very gritty and is hospital, like you can actually, you know, very rugged place uh, into almost like a nice cocoon. And then at the end of the short, she actually is able to change almost planets, right? So again, that is kind of a, a big statement. It's hard to think farther down the line, but I I like to this line that she says, like, you know, uh, a more welcoming home, right? I think that is what, uh, I think, you know, it's part of what you have to find in life, right? It's like, you know, just, hey, if you're not liked in a place, maybe it's time to find a more welcoming place and, and you know, someone that, um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of connected to the making of the short too, like, you know, coming to Spain, to Madrid, creating El Guidi Studios and, and, and to make this short, you know, I've kind of, you know, had a, a good team that I worked before, but there was another new talent and skills that actually came with those uh, new people that actually really gave something special to this. So it's a great, you know, that's what is a great journey. And, and I always think of the experiences of these projects as, you know, not only the, the project in itself and when it comes out, but the experience that you go through making it because you meet pretty interesting and, and amazing artists on the on the path, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Any any more? You guys? We can cut it out. Great. Okay. I'm a short one at this time. I'll do last one. Okay, let's do the last one.
really influenced by uh, LC's Sedona, yes. I think. Um, the, I was just wondering where, that, where the design process decided to go there and, and why specifically that sword. So that there's, uh, there's actually a lot of like inspiration to those designs. Um, I wanted to, again, there's a big history of uh, sword making in, in Spain, right? And I wanted to, um, and again, there, you know, I wanted to connect that uh, to, I think, how Star Wars movie art crafts and, and Star Wars in general, you know, the artistry that is behind it and is, is very nuanced, it's very delicate, like, you know, everything is, is designed in a way that is, you know, functional, but at the same time, there's a beauty to it, there's a, there's, it feels used. So, you know, I wanted to imbue that design with history in, in Sith, right? And the, the two things that are, you know, the hilts are, you know, different almost styles of sword, sword <coughs> swordmanship, right? It's like, you know, one is more medieval, Shuas buckle, right? That's kind of the master. And that's actually the medieval, you know, uh, Tithona, right? The, the, the sword of El Cid. And then there's another one that was more of a rapier feel. But again, instead of like making a rapier, I wanted to, you know, imbue it with influences of what, um, again, George Lucas, probably some of the influences of the movies that are, you know, Kurosawa movies and samurai movies, right? And that katana. Uh, so there's, you know, there's different places. I wanted to, you know, it felt like right visually. But yeah, those hilts were you know very specific at, at how where those come from. So great. Okay, we now have time for more. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.